Hi, it's Dr. Sherry. I want to take just a minute and tell you about this hormone test that we've been using for quite a while now. It's called the Dutch test and it stands for Dried Urine Test for Comprehensive Hormones. And that's exactly what it is. It's a very comprehensive look at hormones. So not only are we looking at hormones, we're also looking at the breakdown components of these hormones. And so it's really important to get a full look full perspective at all the different hormones in the body and also how you're metabolizing them. So we can see that, you know, if you're on hormone replacement therapy, or even if you're not seeing that you're breaking down these hormones into a more protective type of pathway. It's a really important part of using hormones or just seeing personally how your own hormone production is being utilized. So we get to look at a, a, quite a variety of different things here. We look at total estrogen, we're looking at progesterone, and we're looking at testosterone. We also get to look at a couple other important hormone components like DHEA. DHEA is considered our anti-aging hormone and it's a precursor to many hormones in the body, particularly testosterone. But looking at that gives us a perspective of how well we're going to age, what our hormone reserves are like, and also what's happening with our stress glands. So we look at our adrenal hormones. Many of you might be aware that you can measure out your cortisol, your stress hormones throughout the day. It has what we call a diurnal pattern. And so we like to see it higher in the morning here and then going down lower in the afternoon. And it goes so low at night that we're able to sleep well, get a good restorative sleep. So it's really important to look at your cortisol pattern in terms of hormone production, because if we are in a high cortisol state, we'll start to steal from some of our sex hormones. So you'll, you'll end up with lower levels of progesterone, lower levels of testosterone, things like that. And that can manifest in a variety of different issues, issues related to fertility, PMS, low libido, early aging, things like that. What's really interesting with this test is not only are we looking at cortisol, but again, kind of like the sex hormones, we are looking at how we're breaking those down. So further down in the, the pathway, you'll actually get to see a really interesting perspective of your diurnal pattern of cortisol, but also how you're breaking that cortisol down down. And that gives you a whole nother perspective into how you're handling stress and how you are able to make hormones. So if we go back up here a little bit, we can also see the other perspectives we're getting from hormone metabolism. So as I mentioned, here's your DHEA and how that DHEA is broken down. You also see how your progesterone here, how your progesterone is broken down. Um, when your testosterone comes down here, you get to look and see if you are using what we call an androgenic type of testosterone. So testosterone where you might actually see See symptoms of too much testosterone. You see that in issues like polycystic ovarian syndrome, people that have a propensity towards acne or facial hair or weight issues. Um, so that's important. Not only so we're not only looking at overt testosterone, but we're seeing how those metabolites are broken down, particularly in your body. And here we get your metabolites of your three different types of estrogens, which is again very important. Here we're looking at estradiol, which is your more potent estrogen. But we're also looking at estriol, which is not as potent, but a more protective type of estriol. So we get to see what your metabolites of these three different types of estrogens are in your body. And here we pull a little bit of genetics in so we can see how you are methylating your estrogens. So this is a really important component, particularly for those of you who have had a history of estrogen dominance or for those of you who are taking bioidentical estrogen therapy, you want to really ensure that you are methylating your estrogens well. And what this means is that you are taking these estrogens down into a protective pathway, so they're not going to cause any kind of hormone-related issues down the road. So that this is really interesting component to see. We run it in genetic panels all the time. If you're, you're really interested in getting a broader perspective of this, you can run full genetic panels and, and get a, a lot of information about genetics related to liver and hormone metabolism. But here we get a glimpse of it just related specifically to estrogen metabolism. So it's really important that we see these behind the scenes components of hormones, how we're breaking them down, how we're utilizing them in the body and how it's specific for you. You're going to metabolize hormones or have a different hormone uh, cascade, a different pattern of hormones than somebody next to you. And, and symptoms can be fairly similar, but again, we're all individually so unique. You know, nutritionally, you can put a plan together once you see this pattern and really figure out, well, how do we get you methylating 
better? How do we make sure your androgens or your testosterone is not overly androgenic? There's certain fatty acids that you can use and certain nutrients to shift these pathways. Putting together a nutritional plan related to hormones is very important, regardless of whether you're choosing to use bioidentical hormones, if you're already on them, or if you never want to be on them. Looking at this type of picture is really important because you can help influence how you're going to age and how your hormones are going to be metabolized. So, okay. I hope that wasn't more information than you actually wanted, but I hope you have a great healthy day.